Hello, my friend. Since the October 7th, 2023 Hamas massacre of Israelis, in which 1,200 people, 80% of them civilians, were slaughtered over the span of about 12 hours, the anti-Israel crowd has continued to minimize and dismiss our pain by telling us that it didn't start on October 7th. They are, of course, implying that the October 7th massacre was the inevitable consequence of 76 years of Palestinian oppression at the hands of the Jewish state. They've likened October 7th to the oppressed resisting oppression. In my view, the most disturbing comparison is to that of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. According to the anti-Israel narrative, this all started in 1948 when 750,000 Palestinians were uprooted from their homes. In other words, after oppressing Palestinians for 76 years, well, what did we expect? This argument can be debunked with a simple historical timeline, but more importantly, I'm also going to break down the argument's morality. But first, it didn't start on October 7th. What's it exactly? The Israel-Palestinian conflict? No, of course the israel Palestinian conflict didn't start on October 7th. It also didn't start in 1948. History and oppression don't start counting on the arbitrary start date that happens to be convenient to your narrative. Or is it this war? Because if so, yes, this war did start on October 7th. It started at 6.29 a.m. on October 7th when Hamas violated an Egypt, Qatar, and United Nations brokered ceasefire that had come into effect on May 21st, 2021. The war up north with Hezbollah likewise started the following day on October 8th when Hezbollah violated a United Nations brokered ceasefire from 2000. 6 2006 an immoral and legally baseless argument it doesn't matter when it started or who started it because even war has rules even if this war didn't start on october 7th hamas actions on october 7th violated international humanitarian law multiple times over Deliberately targeting civilians, as Hamas did, by burning them alive in their homes and vehicles or executing them at point-blank range, is a war crime. Kidnapping civilians is not only a war crime, but a crime against humanity. Hamas, if you'll recall, kidnapped civilians of all ages, including elderly Holocaust survivors and an infant only nine months old. Even Hamas kidnapping of Israeli soldiers gravely violates international law. Executing prisoners of war, as Hamas has continued to, do, continued to do, including by beheading, is a war crime. Torturing prisoners of war is a war crime. The use of sexual violence as a weapon of war is not only a war crime, but also a crime against humanity. The evidence, the evidence that Hamas weaponized rape as a weapon of war and with the hostages every day since is very, very extensive. Pillaging and looting is a war crime. Hamas, Islamic Jihad, and thousands of Palestinian civilians looted and pillaged the invaded kibbutzim on October 7th. Let me put it this way. The Jews of the Warsaw Ghetto had every right to revolt against the Nazis. And against the Nazis, they revolted. In 29 days of fighting, the Jewish partisans killed just 17 Nazi soldiers and no civilians. They raped, kidnapped, and tortured no one. Had they done so, especially to non-combatants, I wouldn't regard the Warsaw Ghetto uprising as a point of Jewish pride and resilience. But as a deep shame. There is nothing in international humanitarian law or in human conscience that dictates, for example, that the three infants purposely slaughtered in early hours of October 7th are responsible for any injustices that the Palestinian people may have suffered in the past. This argument is baseless, immoral, and holds zero water under the scrutiny of international law. Thank you for your time and attention.